Welcome back. The Revival Centers of Papua New Guinea has been in PNG for the last 34 years and with its work has seen many Christians change their life and take the Word of God. Principal Pastor Godfrey Whippen, who is a former radio broadcaster back in the 70s and now as the principal pastor, has seen him carry out the work of God to the people in the remote areas of PNG. Paul Tomic Jr. reports. As a former radio broadcaster and journalist by profession, and now as the principal pastor to the revival centers of PNG, Pastor Godfrey Whippon has seen the work of God reaching out to the people. He was speaking exclusively to NBC National News this morning about how his church and his pastors have worked very closely with the people of PNG and onto the district and LLG. Letter Rain Revival is moving the world now, all over the world. People are coming out of the churches, coming out of the world as well, to receive the Holy Spirit, with the biblical evidence of speaking in other tongues. Acts 2.4, Mark 16.17, Acts 2.38, talks about that. And this is what is happening. Him and his pastors and church leaders have even preached the word of God into some remote and unknown places which do not have services to the people. We love you and we talk to you now. Come out and be separate and let us not be partakers of their sins. He said after working in the radio industry as a broadcast officer and journalist writing his stories in the radio and papers, has seen the work of God turning him to where he is now. The provincial pastor for revival centers in NCD, Pastor Michael Kumung, who said that despite the current economic times the country is facing, the churches are still preaching the gospel of God to many people. You know, there's no time left. It's life and death issue that we are talking about. Repent, baptize, and receiving the Holy Spirit is the, the true salvation that this, this world needs. And it's already here in PNG. Revival is moving. Jump on and be part of the great movement and save yourself. Paul Tomic Jr., NBC National News, Port Mosby. Now, audio tapes have been leaked suggesting that British, French, Italian and U.S. forces had been coordinating airstrikes in support of the renegade Libyan general Khalif Haftar. The news outlet, the Middle East Eye, obtained the recording. So, just who is Khalif Haftar? Well, he held Mohammed Gaddafi's ceasefire in 1969. But 40 years later, he joined the uprising that brought the late detect dictator down. Last year, Haftar was in the spotlight again after starting a self-declared campaign to drive armed groups from Libya's second biggest city, Benghazi. What these leaked tapes show are conversations between Libyan pilots and the airbase, the operations room in the airbase. Uh, we hear voices in both Arabic and English, and in the airbase we have French voices, Italian voices, American voices, and British voices. What's clear is that Western forces um, are helping Haftar coordinate airstrikes in eastern Libya, which is where his uh, base of control is. But the targets there aren't actually Islamic State targets. They're his political enemies, some of whom are Islamists, uh, some of whom uh, are other political affiliations. Um, so they're not attacking uh, IS. As you mentioned, he's undermining the government in Tripoli. The government in Tripoli is the one which is launching the offensive in Sirte against Islamic State. And so we have this bizarre situation where Western governments are diplomatically and publicly supporting at the government in Tripoli, but then their militaries are supporting Haftar in the east. Okay, so you've just painted a very complicated and messy situation. Let me unpick some of what you've told us. Can you tell us more? There are dozens of armed groups operating in Libya. Can you yes. tell us more about who Khalifa Haftar is targeting? What is his strategy? I mean, his strategy, as um, one of the experts I quoted in my piece is saying, is he doesn't want any political enemies in his, in his half of Libya. So he's targeting anyone and everyone who gets in his way, including people who would otherwise support the unity government. So it's actually So not he has exploited the fight against IS, precisely. the Western fight against IS, to uh, strengthen his own uh, influence it, within that territory. Absolutely. I mean, it's... Um, and you have to wonder why are uh, Western governments 
uh, supporting him if he's not going directly after IS. Um, lots of these groups, if you're going to have a unity government, if you're going to have uh, political reconciliation in the country, you're going to have to bring some of these groups in. In fact, one of the groups that he was bombing in Suq al-Hut, which is uh, the fish market, which I mentioned in my article, is funded by uh, the Libyan Defense Ministry. So how can, you, how can you support a man bombing groups which some of whom are fighting against IS and some of whom are going to be essential to bringing the country together? And now to tell us what's coming up in sports, Evelyn, what do we have lined up? Thanks, Sherry. Let's take a look at what we have lined up. Larabada Reds lead the Hiri Cup competition. Shipping company Consort Express Lines comes on board to support lay women's team with merchandise. And Sprint Queen Toya Whistle is first woman to qualify for Rio Olympics. Join me later in the news for more on this and the rest of the sports story. It's back to you, Jerry. Thank you, Evelyn. And do stay with us on NBC National News.